So we're in section 5.2 and we're going to verify identities. So the only difference between what we're doing today and what we did on Friday where we simplified, uh, simplified using identities, when we verify identities we have a goal, we have a target that we're trying to hit. Um, so let's remember, we, we talked about this a couple of times, when we are talking about an identity, what is, what is special about an identity? Always true. Always true. Identity is always true. So it doesn't matter what theta is, it doesn't matter what x is, an identity is always going to be true. So when we are verifying identities, we're going to have an equation. We're going to have an equal sign involved. But we're trying to verify so we don't know that it's true yet. We're trying to show that it's true. So one of our rules when we're verifying identities is we don't work across the equal sign. And what I mean by uh, work across the equal sign is we don't add things to both sides, we don't divide things by both sides. We don't know that it's an equation, we don't know that it's equal, we're trying to show that it's equal. So we can't do the things that we do when we, when we know things are equal. Um, we are going to work on one side at a time. So I'm going to say we're not going to do a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other and, and go that way. We just want to work with one side and show that we can get to the other side. It's usually easier to work the compl more complicated side first. The more complicated side is going to give us a little more to work with. So, so we'll have a little more to grab a hold of on a more complicated side. Um, the tools that we're going to use are the same ones we used when we were working with simplifying identities. We're going to factor. We're going to substitute. We're going to find common denominator. We're going to cancel common terms in a numerator and denominator. So all of those things that we've done before. We want to look for, um, look for opportunities for using Pythagorean identities, using our reciprocal, using our various identities. We want to recognize which trig functions uh, work well together. Sines and cosines work well together. Secants and cosecants, secants and tangents work well together. And tangents and co tangents and cosecants work well together because of the Pythagorean identities. As a last resort, if you're not sure what else to do, We want to write everything in terms of sines and cosines. And then work from there. And sometimes, sometimes it's not a last resort. None of these rules are hard and fast, other than we can't work across the equal sign and, and my suggestion that we only work one side at a time. So this isn't always a last resort. But often, if you're not sure what to do, that, that can help you out. And I'm going to say try, try something. If you're not sure what to do, just try something. Because often, if you try something, it'll lead you to a way that, that actually works. With trig, verifying trig identities, there's, there are more than, one way, uh, more than one way to get to the answers. The ways, that, the ways that I choose to do it might not be the ways that you choose to do it, but you should get to the same place. In your book on page 357, it kind of lists these things out. It has a list of, of basically what I just said. And in the book, there are also five or six other examples, like what we'll do in the, on the board today, um, that you can look at for ways of, that uh, people might, might, you might go about working with these identities. So what I want to do is, like we did on Friday, I just want to work through several of these. So, on all of these we're going to verify. We want to show that these are true. 
So the first one, sine squared x minus 1 over sine squared x equals negative cotangent squared x. We want to show that that is true. So for this one, I'm going to say the left side looks more complicated to me. So I'm going to work with that side. Whenever we see a trig function squared with a 1, we should think Pythagorean identity. So let me write our Pythagorean identity over here. And I'm just going to do a little, uh, <coughs> little work with the Pythagorean identity to, get to see if I can get to something that looks like this. This is sine squared x minus 1. So let me subtract 1 from both sides here. So I know this is true. I'm trying to show this is true. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I want this sine squared x by itself. So now I'm going to subtract cosine squared x from both sides. Sine squared x minus 1 equals negative cosine squared x. Well, we're almost done now. So I'm going to plug this in. This is negative cosine squared x over sine squared x, and that equals negative cotangent squared x. So we're all set. This looked like a Pythagorean identity, so I said, what can I do with my Pythagorean identity? in terms of this, and that led me to my answer. Not the only way that you could have done this problem, just the, the way that, that made the most sense to me when I looked at it. The questions on that one? Okay. Here is the one uh, that was also in our homework. This one we're going to have uh, something to work towards. 1 over secant theta minus 1 minus 1 over secant theta plus 1. And I want to show that this equals 2 cotangent squared theta. So to me, the left-hand side definitely looks more complicated. What do we need to do to work with the left-hand side? common denominator. We have to get a common denominator. So I am going to multiply this by secant theta plus 1 in the numerator and denominator, and this by secant theta minus 1. So I get secant theta plus 1 over secant theta plus 1 times 1 over secant theta minus 1 minus 1 over secant theta plus 1 times secant theta minus 1 over secant theta minus 1. I'm putting my parentheses in so I remember to factor properly, or so to distribute properly. All right, now I'm going to multiply. Over here I get a secant theta plus 1 minus here I get a secant theta minus 1. I have a negative this entire quantity. And my common denominator, when I multiply this out, what do I get? Secant squared theta minus 1. We should be feeling very excited now. I have a secant theta minus a secant theta. Those cancel. I have a 1 minus negative 1, so that gives me a 2. Secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared. So this is 2 cotangent squared theta. Like magic, only better. Found my common denominator, used my Pythagorean identity, and I was set. And as soon as I saw that our common denominator was secant theta plus 1 times secant theta minus 1, 
I was like, oh, there's tangent theta. So we're, I, I knew where this one was headed. Questions on that example? Did I tell you Friday how much I love doing these things? Yeah. I love doing trig events. It's like, it's fun, right? What did Mr. Leader say? It's like, uh, it's like Sudoku. It's like Sudoku, only better. Um, okay. Let's look at another one. One plus cotangent squared x times one minus sine squared x, and we want to show that that equals cotangent squared x. Now this one, this one's like a gift. This one's a gift. One plus cotangent squared is what? Cosecant squared x. One minus sine squared is cosine squared. I can rewrite this. How can I rewrite cosecant squared? One over sine squared x. So I have one over sine squared x times cosine squared x, and that is cotangent squared x. These were just Pythagorean identities, so we didn't really, basically we didn't have to do anything. This problem almost did itself. Questions on that example? All right, let's look at another one. We're verifying that secant theta plus tangent theta equals 1 over secant theta minus tangent theta. And in order for this to um, this was the one that I said was, this one ends up being similar to one of the homework problems. I think the homework problem looks something like this, that I said we would do, uh, we would do later. One, the homework problem was five over secant theta plus tangent theta, same, same idea. So let's work the right side here. I could work either side of this, it's hard to tell which one is more complicated, but let's work the right hand side. All right, so in order to work the right side, what do we need to do? We have this denominator that looks kind of intimidating. So let's work on this denominator. So I can rewrite that denominator. One over, how can I rewrite secant theta? One over cosine theta. And how can I rewrite tangent theta? sine theta over cosine theta. All right. Now we have a, this, this looks a little better. I have a common denominator in the denominator. So I can rewrite this as 1 over 1 minus sine theta over cosine theta. I'm dividing by a fraction, so that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this is cosine theta over 1 minus sine theta. And on Friday we talked about a technique for dealing with a denominator that looks like this. So what do I want to do here? Okay. 1 plus sine theta. Think about, <coughs> excuse me, multiplying by the conjugate. So I'm going to multiply by 1 plus sine theta over 1 plus sine theta. So I multiply that out and I'm going to I'm not going to distribute here. Cosine theta times 1 plus sine theta and in the denominator I'm getting excited already about this. 1 minus sine theta times 1 plus 
sine theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. There's my trig function squared and a 1. So this is cosine theta <coughs> times 1 plus sine theta over 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. All right, and now I'm going to go up over here. I have a common factor of cosine theta in the numerator and denominator. So the cosine cancels with one of the cosine thetas in the denominator. And I get 1 plus sine theta over cosine theta. Now I'm trying to get to here. So I need two things added together. How can I turn this into two things added together? We talked about this on Friday as well. We're going to split up this fraction. Very nice. So this is 1 over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta. I can split this into two fractions. Cosine theta is my common denominator. And this is secant theta plus tangent theta. So this is very similar to the homework problem um, that we were trying to simplify. Yes? So what? So if I had, what would be my fraction? Okay, so you didn't want to put it in tangent theta, but you just have like 1 plus sine theta over cosine theta. That was in the denominator. No, it's like sine, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Except it wasn't 1 over cosine theta. It was just sine theta. It was like this? Or like this? Oh, okay. I just want to make sure I understand your question. 1 plus sine theta over this? <laughs> Sorry. So it's 1 over 1 plus totally new thing. Oh, okay. Sine theta over cosine theta. Okay, 1 over 1 plus. Basically like tangent, but just like inside. Oh. Like this? Yeah, but you could have just like take that one and then do like the reciprocal with it, right? You have to put the one also over it this time. Um, so you're saying does this equal, does this just equal, um, if I took the reciprocal of this? Yeah. If I flip that, I would get 1 plus sine theta over cosine theta, reciprocal? No, if you wanted to put that on top, then have it all over. Right, so if I found, if I'm looking for the reciprocal of this, and I wrote it like that, is that what you were asking? Would that work? Um, yeah, because then in order to add these two fractions, I'd have to find the common denominator, and then my common denominator, let's see, would that would be cosine theta, does that, does that work? One over one plus, and I'm flipping that, yeah? So if, if I'm finding the reciprocal of this, would it be this? Yeah. That was what you were asking? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Questions on that example? Okay. Let's look at another one. Um, We want to verify that cosine t times the cotangent t equals cosecant t minus sine t. We want to verify that. So which side do we want to work, right or left? Hard to tell which one is more complicated, so we just need to pick one. 
Let's work the left, okay? So let's work the left side. Um, so I want to rewrite this. I want to, to, to work with this, rewrite it in some way that I can work. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that, so I'm going to do the work over here. So how can I write cosine t, how can I rewrite cosine t times cotangent t? Just so I'm going to rewrite that as cosine t over sine t, just, to, just as a way to start. Now I can say this equals cosine squared t over sine t. Now I look at the right hand side and I'm gonna, I have to have something where I have a plus or a minus or something. So what can I do with cosine squared t to turn it into something plus something or something minus something? I can make a one over secant <coughs> squared, but I want, so what I want to get to is where I'm, I have something added or subtracted. What, what do you think, Tristan? Cosine t plus, that would give us a cosine squared minus 1. So you're saying multiply numerator and denominator? Okay, I think that would probably work. That sounds a little more complicated than I want it to be, but I think that would work. Yes? One minus sine squared t. I like that one. That one seems a little easier. I think, Tristan, your, your method would work. Um, I, there's, there's nothing wrong with it. Just I think it would get more complicated before it got easier. So I'm going to say that cosine squared t is 1 minus sine squared t using my Pythagorean identity over sine t. Now we're almost done. What can I do with this fraction? I can split this into two fractions. That's 1 over sine t minus sine squared t over sine t, which gives me cosecant t. We have a common factor here, minus sine t. So that one's not too bad. Not too bad. Working the right side, um, just a little more complicated, not, not a whole lot more, but we could work, work either side. And there are several different ways that we could go about this. All right, questions on that example? Okay, let's look at one last one. We want to verify that cotangent squared theta over 1 plus cosecant theta equals 1 minus sine theta over sine theta. This one's a little more challenging. Um, do you want to work the right side or the left side? Work the right? The left side looks harder. Okay, so let's work, should we work the left? E either way works. Um, all right, so working the left side here, this is very similar to what we did here. So how can I rewrite cotangent squared theta? I can I can write a cosine squared theta over sine squared. I could write it that way, but I have this. Cosecant squared theta minus one, right? Cotangent squared theta plus one equals cosecant squared theta. So this is cosecant squared theta minus 1 over 1 plus cosecant theta. All right, Tristan, thinking back to what you said on the last problem, what can I, how can I rewrite cosecant squared theta minus 1? Perfect. So we get to use your technique kind of in reverse on this problem. So this is cosecant theta plus 1. I'm going to factor cosecant squared theta minus 1.
All right. So now I have a common term of cosecant theta plus 1. I can see the end. Those cancel. This equals cosecant theta minus 1. How am I going to get it to look like this? Uh, rewrite it, okay? So I'm going to write cosecant theta as 1 over sine theta minus 1. What do we do next? How do I add those two? We have to have a common denominator. Our common denominator is sine theta. I can see the end. So this is equal to 1 minus sine theta when I find my common denominator over sine theta. And I'm done. So I multiplied to get here, I multiplied this by sine theta over sine theta to find my common denominator. So this one was a little tricky. This factoring bit is a little, little tricky. Working the, it turns out that working the, the right-hand side of this one, a little bit easier. But this factoring, it was nice because Tristan had thought of that factoring deal um, earlier. So that tied right in with this. All right, questions. So your homework is using all of these, using all of these different techniques, using these tools. What will happen is you hopefully you'll start developing some insight. I could see it already in the class. People are saying, "Oh, we need to do this. We have to do this. What if we did this?" That's the kind of approach you need for these for these trig identities. Is what if I try this? How about this? Can this work? And and you just go for it. All right. Homework. All right, there you go.